So uh, my name is Ben Smith, and I'm a senior at Providence. And if most of y'all know anything about me, uh, it's my dog, Daisy. Is she on the screen? Yeah, so that's Daisy. That's my dog. And she's absolutely perfect. Everything about her is amazing. She's never done anything wrong in her entire life. But one time, she ran away. And we just moved into our new house, and we're trying to get everything set up. And we're in this chaos of, like, trying to move in. And, you know, there's a lot going on. And in this, one of us left the back gate open. And we let Daisy out, and she saw this opportunity and took off. And after a while, we, we kind of start freaking out. Like, you know, it's my dog. I love her. Like, I'm starting to get a little concerned. So we go out, and we start looking for her on, like, first day of moving in. Everybody kind of thinks we're weird. And we eventually find her. And I'll never forget, when we found Daisy, she was so confused. And I th thought this was so weird. Like, how could you be so confused? Like, you could have died, Daisy. Like, our house backs up to Phillips Highway. Like, that's not really a good place for a big dog like her to be running. You know, she's not very nimble. So, like, she probably would have died. So I was so confused why she was confused. But then I realized that when she poked her head out of the gate and, and she saw all the freedom that she could have had, she didn't see the death of the car. She saw the freedom and the abundance of, of life that she thinks she could have. And then I realized, like, it's so easy to look down at Daisy and go, you're so stupid, bro. Like, how could you not realize that a car will kill you? And it's really, really hard to realize that most of the time we are the stupid dog. And in the same way that Daisy could not see the death when she just walked outside of the gate, it's really hard for us to see the death that comes out of the, the things that are not in God's guidance. And God does not give you guidance and give you rules to, to punish you or because he hates you, but it's actually because he loves you so much. Like when God created Adam, he, he picked up all this dust and dirt and stuff and breathed the life of Adam into Adam. And Adam woke up and he was face to face with God. And when he was face to face with God, God turned him around and showed him this garden that he'd created for him. And it was a perfect garden. And he told him a bunch of stuff about the garden. He, he showed him the four rivers that were made, the plants and trees that were pleasing, and, and the animals that he created for Adam to rule over. And he was so nice that he actually gave Adam somebody to rule over everything with. And what he didn't do was he didn't breathe this breath of life into Adam and wake Adam up and give him a bunch of rules. He gave him a bunch of relationship and just gave him one rule. And the rule is to not eat of the tree because this, this is why. It's because if you ate of the tree, you would die. It wasn't because he didn't want you to have fun. It's because the freedom that comes without God is death. So when we ate the apple, sin entered the world. And whenever sin entered the world, God could no longer be present in this world. So God's uh, spirit resided in this room. It was his holy room. And us, the people, were separated from everything about God, his presence, everything about him, by this curtain. And when Jesus died on the cross, when he gave up his spirit, the clouds went dark, uh, uh, an earthquake erupted, everything, everything bad that could have happened happened. And the veil that held God's presence back from us was torn from the top to the bottom. You see, God created you to be in relationship with him, not to follow his rules. And Romans 8:28 says it this way, and for we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. You wanna know what your purpose is? Your purpose is to be in relationship with God. Your purpose is not to just follow the rules of God, but instead to love him so much, to chase after him with everything in your heart, that the rules would just become second nature. So let me ask you this question. Do you believe that God is who he says he is? And if you answer yes to that question, why do you not trust that his ways, that his rules, that his life is infinitely better than yours? Anything you could ever come up with. And John 10.10 10 says it this way, that the enemy has only come to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus has come so that you may have life and live it abundantly. You see, when Daisy walked out of the gate and she thought that she saw an abundance of life, but truly it was an abundance of death. But us and our wisdom, me and my family, we saw the death that could have happened. And we were like, you stupid dog, how could you be so dumb? But we're that dog, man. You know, like whenever we walk out in sin, whenever we step out and we see an abundance of freedom, God sees an abundance of death. And that is why he has rules in your life. You know, faith talked about this abundance life. There's an abundant life 
in God. But that only comes in relationship with God. So today, every day, and for as long as you live, live in the abundance of life that only comes from a relationship with the Lord. Thank you.